Are you looking to scratch that kit building itch? How about building one of the hottest QRP kits available today? Hi, I'm Bob WV7W, and today in the house, we are going to be looking at the QRP Labs QCX Mini. I'm actually really excited to share my experience with this really cool kit. It will quickly become apparent how much I like the QCX Mini, but rest assured, I bought this kit with my own money, twice actually, and am in no way affiliated with QRP Labs. According to the QRP Labs website, the QCX Mini is a feature-packed, high-performance, single-band, 5-watt CW transceiver kit with Whisper Beacon and built-in alignment and test equipment. It's available for the 160, 80, 60, 40, 30, 20, and 17 meter bands. It has a rotary encoder, synthesized tuning, VFO A, B, and split, iambic keyer, CW decoder, and more. When they say, and more, they aren't kidding. This little thing is truly amazing. It even has cat control. And although I don't think I will ever use it since I plan on using it mostly in the field, but if you want to use it in the shack and control it with your PC, they got you covered. It has 16 frequency presets, so you can keep your favorite frequencies at your fingertips. Now 16 may not sound like a lot, but remember this is a single band radio, so that is probably more than you will ever use. The QCX has an iambic memory keyer with 12 message memories. My KX2 only has three. You get to the memories by double pressing the rotary encoder. You can then select which memory with the encoder knob. I like how it tells you right here in the display what's going to be sent. Then to send the message, you press the encoder knob once. If you want to have it repeat, you press the select button once. And if you want to cancel, you can just press exit. They also make it really easy to get to the keyer speed by pressing the select button once, and then you can set the speed. You get all of that for the low price of $58. Now you will likely want to spend just a bit more, like $20 for this beautiful aluminum case. Certainly not required, but I can't imagine a better enclosure than this one. You will probably also want the TXCO, or Temperature Compensated Crystal Oscillator. And something that wasn't available when I built this one, the new automatic gain control module. Now this brings the cost to just over $90, which is still a bargain for everything this little rig does. I built this kit last summer as a 40 meter version, and in this box here I have another one that I will build as a 20 meter version. And since it's now available, I ordered the AGC module for this one as well as for the 40 meter one. Now if you've listened to this thing without AGC for just a little bit, you'll appreciate why you want it. If you turn up the volume to pick up a weak signal and then tune around to a strong one, you'll know what I mean. It'll blast you out. The build is not difficult at all. The one thing that scares most builders is winding the toroids. Let me tell you, it is really not that bad. Probably the toughest one is T1, particularly if you're building a lower band model. The point is, if you can count, you can wind toroids. And actually, the biggest problem builders have with toroids isn't even winding them. It's making sure all the enamel is off the wire at the end so you can get a good solder connection. And there's some tricks to get past that, so don't fear that either. The Mini has a lot of surface mount components which are already soldered to the board for you, which only leaves about 20 capacitors, 5 potentiometers, and a handful of other parts to solder. So compared to the Elecraft K2 that I built, it's not a lot of soldering. Certainly not the most challenging kit I've ever built, but I might think twice about it being your very first attempt at kit building. I might start with a Pixie S or Rockmite first. Now this would be a great follow-on, or if you're comfortable with soldering parts to a PC board, then go ahead with the QCX Mini. The directions for the build are as good as it gets and are very easy to follow. Hans has done a great job not only in writing a great guide, but he has kept it current as revisions are made. The QCX has a great display and menu system that not only make this a joy to use, but it also has built-in test and alignment equipment that means you can do the complete setup and alignment without a shop full of electronics test equipment. I was very pleasantly surprised that I was able to get this thing working properly on the first try. This means that your chance of success is excellent. The amount of configuration on the QCX is awesome. Things as esoteric as the delimiter between the digits, which by default are commas 
And for those of us in the U.S., we are accustomed to decimal points. Well, no problem. You can change it. It has a battery indicator, and you can set what a fully charged battery level is and what voltage each step is. So configuring this to match up with your particular battery is no problem. There are a bunch of settings for just about everything you could imagine. This goes way beyond what most people expect from a kit radio as far as configurability. So how does this thing perform? Let's dig into that a bit. On the receive side, it has a 200 hertz filter that claims to have no ringing, and I found that to be true. It is funny, but you really don't hear much in the way of noise. So you may be wondering if it is even working. But when you come across a signal, you can rest assured it is. The signals just seem to pop right out. Now, is this receiver going to compete with the KX2 or KX3? No, but it does a pretty darn good job. So how about that CW decoder? That thing works really well. In fact, I find that it works better than the decoder on my KX2. Now, on the transmit side, the receive signals seem to be clean with no key clicks. And with 12 volts or more, you should see pretty close to a full 5 watts out. So what's missing from this thing, aside from the kitchen sink? It doesn't have a speaker, and with the size of it, you can easily see why. You will need either some earphones or an amplified speaker with a 3.5 millimeter plug like this little guy I got from Amazon. And there's a link in the description for this one. You will also need to supply a battery, but it doesn't have to be a car battery as this thing sips power. I use this BioNO 3 amp hour pack as it runs forever and is pretty small and light. And I've even run it off of a 3-cell LiPo RC battery like this one, which is even smaller and lighter. You will also need a CW key of some sort. I use these paddles from CW Morris, and I also have their mini straight key. Links to both of these are in the description as well. Last, you will need an antenna. And if you want to keep it light, an NFED half wave cannot be beat. Like this little beauty here from Adam, K6ARK. You can probably expect a video on this guy soon. A resonant dipole will also work great. And pretty much any resonant antenna will work fine with this rig. But what if you don't know CW? Well, this would be a perfect thing to help spark that interest. Now, I'm not one of those guys who think that if you don't know CW, you aren't a real ham. There are many areas of our hobby that don't require it. But if you're interested in portable QRP operations, CW is the simplest way to do that. No need for a PC to do digital, and often the bands aren't suitable for QRP voice. Okay, I will get off my CW soapbox. So if you haven't figured it out, I love this thing. It is as much fun to build as it is to use. Hans has done a great job with this really nice kit. QRP Labs is based out of Turkey, and it takes a little while to get your kit. But don't let that put you off. I would not hesitate at all to go out and get one of these today. Thanks for watching. If you like this, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. You'll get notified when I put up new videos, and it helps get this channel out to more hams. So, until next time, 73s.